Hello and welcome to Mind Boggles. My name is Bud Hollowell. I hope you enjoy some of the shows you've seen in the past. We tend to talk about how the mind works, how it thinks, how it uh, causes trouble, how we can learn how to neutralize some of the beliefs and patterns in the past that have kind of hassled us, and learn how to relax the jaw, which relaxes the body, how to slow our breathing, which relaxes the mind, and then how to allow some of our thoughts and feelings that jam us up just to kind of go past, right? We've talked a little bit about the evolution of consciousness from physical to cultural to global to cosmic consciousness. We've talked about some fun things. I want to talk a little bit more about uh, a perennial philosophy today. A little bit interesting stuff in that um, I teach comparative religion at a university in Tampa, even though in Lakeland I'm, I'm one of the owners of Flamingo Home Care. So I have kind of a number of hats that I wear. But I thought you might enjoy a little take on comparative religion to kind of give you an overview of how other people study different religions, just for the heck of it. Um, one of the, the descriptions that people have when you talk about comparative religion is the idea uh, from the ancient Hindu teachings where they talk about there's two kings and they're friends. And one of the kings uh, is going to send him, his friend, an elephant. Well, this other king says, man, I've never seen an elephant. So he sends five blind men out to, just to investigate this elephant and come back and tell him what this elephant is like. So the, the blind men come back and say, well, this elephant's on its way to you, king, but uh, uh, here's what I, f I found. And one blind man says, the elephant's like a, like a tree, because he had his arms around the leg. And the other four blind men go, what are you talking about? The other one blind man said, no, no, it's like a wall, because he had his hands on the side of the elephant. And then we go, what? One guy said, no, it's like a snake, because he had the tail, right? And one guy had the ear, which is like a big banana leaf. All the, the, the five blind men said, no, they weren't anything like that. But, but they were all true. They did experience that. But the elephant was way too big to be understood, to be explained from one point of view. So one of the views, and as you study other religions, is they're all true, but none of them are literal. They're just attempts to describe this unspeakable, the undescribable. So that's the one, one way to look at it. Anyways, there's 300 variations of religions, very fairly distinct religions, and they all have different ways to go about it. Most of, the, most of them are cultural differences. And they have their own approaches, their own strategies, their own meditations, their own prayers. But if you look at them, there's normally four ideas that kind of permeate all religions in general. One, they most of them agree that we come from a common essence. Uh, West, we would use the word God, in, the, in other words, Allah or the, the Buddha nature. There's different words, but we'll call it that we come from a common essence. That's something they all agree on. This common essence can be experienced directly. Some, most religions are based on someone's experience. In this case, Jesus' experience, Buddha's experience, Lao Tzu's experience, uh, Muhammad's experience. Someone did something extraordinary, and from that, boom, happened a religion, right? So the second thing that religions agreed on is that common essence can be experienced directly. A uh, third thing most religions agree to is there's a higher self and a lower self, or you might call a soul and a personality. There's this kind of dichotomy about ourselves where we realize we have this personality that, that Bud has, and Bud needs this, and Bud wants that. And, uh, but behind that, there's something that seems to be eternal or immortal that we, re we call a soul in our Western sense. Yeah. Uh, the fourth thing that most religions agree to is the purpose in life is to learn how to experience this common essence directly ourself. Right? Most cultures kind of give up on the idea, but if you study the teachings behind the religions, most of them say, well, that's the whole point of being here is to learn how to remove the blocks, remove the personalities, remove the ego, remove desires, remove negative thinking, remove beliefs that aren't appropriate, that are not useful, so that we can open to have that direct experience, right? 
Well, um, how? How do you do that? Classically, most religions will use four different strategies to make that connection. One of them, the most common in our Western culture, is devotion. You devote yourself to your master completely and totally, so your life is dedicated to that particular master teacher, being Jesus, in this case in the West quite often. Uh, but you align yourself totally with that experience. That would be one strategy that uh, other religions go, yep, that works. But we also real realize that not everybody is cut out to be devoted. They, that's just not part of their nature, it's part of the personality. Others might have the idea of work, like uh, Mother Teresa in India, when Calcutta working with the children and the poor. Here was God taking care of God, you know, giving it all back. That kind of work, not devotion, but just work. Others are into study. Uh, Gyan Yoga, of, of studying all the different teachings, all the different religions in the world, trying to get a sense of what are the rules, what do I have to do? Right? That would be the Gyan Yoga, the, the philosopher, the one who uh, studies all the different varieties of teachings. And finally, the last strategy of the four would be meditation, basically. How to learn how to sit down, make yourself comfortable, relax your jaw, slow your breathing, which we've talked about before, but then go inside to very, very deliberately and extremely uh, consciously remove anger, remove um, greed, remove all of those obstacles to calm the body, to purify your intentions, to purify your heart, so that over time, if your heart is absorbed in love and your thoughts focused on the common essence, you too, it's said, can have that direct experience. Okay? Anyway, I thought you might be interested uh, as a, a fellow mind boggler that when you look at all the different religions, there are certain patterns that come, come around, right? So whichever you want, happen to have is, is fine. Uh, I was in, in a room once with a, a, a spiritual master named Swami Kriyananda, and the, at the uh, end of his talk one day he said, it's often blessed to be born into a religion, but unfortunate to die in one. And I went, what? He says, well, truth, or in this case, the common essence, is always beyond religious, like the, the blind men and the elephant, right? It, you can describe a part of it, but it's always beyond our ability to describe, right? So he said, if you're, whatever religion you're in, if you're a Christian, or fine. If you're a Buddhist, that's fine. If you're a Jew, that's fine. But he says, all these are like ladders to climb to that common essence. But don't stop to worship the ladder. Huh? So, whew, got it. So as these religions are out there, they're available to all of us as ladders to have maybe the, the if we have the interest, the aptitude, the determination, uh, we can perhaps use devotion, work, study, meditation to maybe have that experience ourself, right? That's a bit of the idea. Anyway, kind of mind-boggling, but I thought you might enjoy a look at the religious experience from a more global standpoint and realizing uh, there's 300 religions out there, more actually, but essentially 300 distinct ones. And they all have their different strategies, but there is a common theme, what's called the perennial philosophy. You know, we come from a common essence. This common essence can be experienced. There's a higher self and a lower self. And with certain strategies, perhaps we can learn to have that experience with the common essence ourself, which for many religions, that's the whole purpose of being here in the first place. But anyway, it's, uh, it's interesting to think about and to study. I hope you enjoyed uh, this, uh, the mind-boggling experience, looking at it from a philosopher's view of religion. Uh, hope you enjoyed. This is Bud Hollowell with Mind Boggles. Until next time, take care of yourself and see if you can do something good for somebody this year. Ah, Matt, take that back. Do something good for somebody today, not just this year. See you next time.